Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 rewards in video games for playing evil. For this list, we'll be looking at the best powers, upgrades, and bonuses which are unlocked by being a terrible person. Are these rewards worth abandoning your moral compass for? Let us know in the comments. Easy, buddy. It's it's your old pal Daxter, remember? Daxter. Before we begin, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning. Yeah, remember Kingdoms of Amalur? Well, it's back and better than ever on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Now, you can enjoy this action RPG with refined visuals, deep character customization and combat, and hundreds of hours of content that will entertain and intrigue. Stick around for more details later in the video. Number 10, The Bomb, Fallout 3. After sending you into a post-apocalyptic wasteland, Fallout 3 quickly lets you choose how you want it to survive, making nice and building alliances, or taking names and kicking ass. In most karma-based games, achieving the status of true evil requires hours of work and a steady procession of nasty choices, but Fallout 3 gives players the chance to become irredeemably awful early on. Finally, someone with a modicum of civility and common sense. When you arrive in Megaton, a town built around an undetonated nuclear bomb, a shady figure offers you a handsome reward for pressing the big red button. Take him up on it, and you'll not only enjoy a hefty payday, but you'll also get to know what it feels like to blow an entire town off the face of the earth. Number 9. Plasmid Powers, Bioshock. Bioshock decided to really test the moral fiber of its players by asking them a simple question. Will you kill this kid if it means you can shoot bees from your fingertips? Given that Bioshock's world is an underwater nightmare filled with dangerous lunatics and murderous diver suits, the temptation to do whatever it takes to max out your plasmid powers is pretty strong. You did the right thing. Just remember, them things aren't people no more. Sure, you would feel better about yourself if you set the little girls free, but then you wouldn't have mind powers, would you? Bioshock does a really good job of adding an emotional weight to your evil choices, but the promise of fully upgraded plasmids is sure to consign many little sisters to a watery grave all the same. How can you do this thing to a child? But there are other little ones who have need of your help. Will you be as cruel to them? Number 8. Bad Monkey, Black and White 2. All creatures can be trained to become lovable, mischievous pets. Or they can be the ultimate disciplined weapons of destruction and war. The Black and White games let you live out the ultimate power fantasy by having you play as an actual honest-to-goodness god. With a civilization to rule over, you can choose either to look after them as a compassionate, kindly god so that they praise your name, or to terrorize them from above until they cower before you. Rather than acting directly though, you'll rely on a creature to act as your stand-in. Over time, not only will it grow to gargantuan proportions, but it will also begin to reflect your ethical choices. So whether you play with the upstanding moral character of a noble lion, or the shameless bloodlust of a ravenous 8-foot-tall killer demon monkey, you'll see that reflected in the game. Creatures can live for war, domination, and destruction. Number 7. Necromancy. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. With its sprawling fantastical land, much of the appeal of Skyrim comes from the freedom it gives the player to do whatever they want. Whether you dream of charging into battle with an axe in each hand, or creeping through the night like a deadly shadow, Skyrim accommodates it all. And that includes those who want to reanimate the bodies of their fallen foes to use as a horde of undead bodyguards. With your foul-smelling entourage in tow, you'll be notably harder to kill, as well as being kind of terrifying. Necromancy really hits the bad guy trifecta of being spooky, gross, and highly effective. Be careful though, raising the dead in public is illegal in certain towns and highly unpopular in most of the others. Number 6. 
Number 6. Dark Strike Jack 2. In the early 2000s, Going Dark was all the rage. While the original Jack and Daxter was a brightly colored 3D platformer about an island boy and his furry friend, Jack 2 spat them both out into a bleak metropolitan future filled with gun-toting goons. After being experimented on by the powers that be, Jack gains the ability to transform into Dark Jack, a beastly, brutal version of himself crackling with dark eco-energy who can reduce enemy troops to scrap metal in a few short seconds. Eventually, your dark powers will allow you to become briefly invincible or grow to Hulk-like proportions, but there's nothing quite like a good Dark Strike to really revel in your destructive capabilities. Number 5. Typhoon Explosion – Deus Ex – Human Revolution As a cybernetically enhanced operative, your body is essentially a highly upgraded weapon in Deus Ex, allowing you to customize each part of it to suit your style. The quiet or loud, lethal or non-lethal combat choices available were nothing new by themselves, but Deus Ex stood out thanks to its commitment to the concept, making it possible to complete the entire game without taking a life. Even the bosses could be taken down non-lethally, if you wanted to retain your sense of humanity. Finish it. Not until you tell me where Megan is. But if you would rather tune your robo-body up into a walking death machine, that was also an option, especially with things like Typhoon Explosion, which pretty much demolishes everything in your vicinity. Last warning. Number 4. Rat Mines – Dishonored 2 Fifteen years after the events of the first game, the steampunk city of Dunwall once again finds itself embroiled in a bloody power struggle. During their quest to restore order, the player must decide whether to add to the carnage or attempt to quell it. While killing off guards is usually the easiest way to play a stealth game, Dishonored 2 gradually makes players pay for their body count. Acting mercifully keeps the city relatively calm, while murdering everyone in sight quickly turns it into a highly fortified, rat-infested, plague-ridden hellhole that is much harder to navigate quietly. That said, the decay does have its advantages. By strapping a bomb onto a rat and then possessing its body, the player can use them as teeny tiny terrors. Oh, wrong. Uh, <laughs> Number 3. Become a Demon King – Fable 3 Like many open-world games, the effect of the player's moral choices in Fable impacts both their appearance and the way the rest of the realm responds to them. Previous games saw the main character become steadily creepier as they made evil choices, but Fable 3 really went all in on this aspect by allowing the player to transform into a full-on demon, complete with horns and wings. Since Fable 3 also lets you become a ruler of Albion, this means that you get to roam the land as a demonic king, terrorizing your citizens with your horrifying appearance while also making them pay taxes. Now, you can also get some nice shiny wings by being a good guy, but no horns. It's all about the horns. Please, no! I'm too rich! Number 2. Obliterating Blast – Infamous Second Son Sometimes, it's important not to overthink these things. It's a blast. It obliterates. It's an obliterating blast. Each game in the Infamous franchise lets the player unlock a series of elemental powers and use them to become either a shining superhero or a monstrous supervillain. Play nice and you'll unlock a restrained, environmentally friendly selection of moves. Play nasty and you'll get some much smashier powers. In the first game, where all your powers are electrical, being bad eventually unlocked Arc Lightning, which was a tremendous way to zap a whole lot of people. In Second Sun, which features powers based on everything from neon to concrete, it includes the aforementioned Obliterating Blast, which, once again, obliterates whatever it blasts. Really, we can't emphasize that enough. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Extra Lives, Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back.
Stop talking. Mass Effect 2. If true, you told Admiral Hackett to abandon the Destiny Ascension. I've had enough of your disingenuous assertions. Destroying the whole world, Undertale. With Kingdoms of Amalur re-reckoning, players will be immersed in a fantasy world that weaves quests, romance, magic, politics, and combat together with stunning visuals and unmatched player choice and exploration. And if that's not enough, the Fatesworn expansion is arriving in 2021. So, if you're eager to revisit the world of Amalur, or never got the pleasure, you can pick up Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning today and begin your epic adventure. There's even a sweet collector's edition available. Check the links in the description for details. Number 1. Force Choke. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Shut up, old man. Your time is over. The age of the Jedi and the Republic is no more. This is the age of Darth Revan and the Sith. The battle between light and dark has been at the heart of the Star Wars franchise ever since Darth Vader tried to recruit his son over to Team Palpatine. In Knights of the Old Republic, players finally got the chance to make that choice for themselves. Would they join the honorable ranks of the Jedi or be swayed by the destructive might of the dark side? With the death of the Jedi, the rebirth of Darth Revan will be complete. The second option really is quite enticing. Sure, fear leads to hate and anger and suffering, but it also leads to lightning powers and badass red lightsabers, so that's really not such a bad deal, is it now, Yoda? Best of all, you get to do Vader's iconic force choke. In the mood for more awesome gaming content? Be sure to check out this video here on Mojo Plays. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.